Hello and welcome to our session. Today we will take a look at the Phantom 4. The GI was nice enough to send me a test model for a few days. First do a really quick unboxing. Show and tell what's in the box. Of course get 8 props. They don't screw on the copter but they have a bayonet style quick lock mechanism. That's nice. You get this charger, charges in around 1 hour and 5 to 10 minutes. Can, can't plug it in the wrong way. Of course you get the cool remote, the cable for micro USB. You get a manual, you get a battery. You get the packaging itself, it's also a feature. It's a nice box for transportation. It has this lock and a cool handle and yeah, nice packing size. I mean, one thing I, I would have loved to see is a removable gimbal and, rem and foldable landing gear so it packs down to even smaller packing sizes. Maybe we will get this with Phantom 5. This way it still is a bit bulky to be thrown in your backpack. The remote just looks like the remote from the Phantom 3. It has the charging port on one side. The battery is really long lasting. I I have this now for like 10 days and I didn't have to charge it and it still has still has 3 out of 4 dots so yeah, that's really a good battery life here I mean this could be one one centimeter larger and it would fit also the older uh, iPad non-air versions or non-iPad minis yeah but a huge iPad makes not really much sense Please also get the decent sunshade because you, or else you, you won't see nothing on the display. You have a USB port on the back for the iPad cable. You don't have HDMI out as a standard here, but this module in the back can be unscrewed and replaced with a HDMI capable. So first Important hint, if you want to use goggles with HDMI, you have to replace the backpack. What, what changed here is that you have a PS and A, position hold, sport mode and uh, attitude mode. Sport mode is the one where you can fly fast, like 70 km per hour, but where you don't get really stable footage. I really enjoyed using the remote, it's decent quality, it has a nice design, it's shiny, which maybe makes the uh, past the arms a bit better. They look thinner than on the Phantom 3. It feels heavy, uh, it's 100 grams uh, heavier than the Phantom 3, it's almost 1.4 kilo. The cam looks different. It is better mounted on the gimbal on both sides now and the cam is really decent. The gimbal, uh, most parts of the gimbal moved into the frame. Storage card is here. Also the USB port for updating. On the bottom side you have the optical flow sensors and the sonar which works really like a charm. You have brighter LEDs. You have larger motors. The motors are more efficient, you get more flight time. Uh, flight time I got around 19 minutes safe. Most of my flights were not just hover, but I traveled a lot of distance and I fly at around 5 to 700 meters, that's a bit more altitude. And I could get safe 19 to 90, 30 minutes until the, the first alarm of 30% kicked in and then I landed. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a good flying time. Of course, you don't get the 28 minutes that are advertised, but yeah, 19 minutes really really feel like a lot. You have forward-facing optical sensors, cameras for the uh, object avoidance system, which works great. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think the propellers are the same size than the old ones. Uh, yeah, and this thing just works. It feels really safe in the air has a locked in feeling, it doesn't drift a lot. Yesterday I flew in really terrible winds, it fought the wind good. And even with the 
lot of movement that the camera footage looked looked okay. Return to home feature worked great. Three? Or four? It can land itself very nicely. It it senses the ground when it descends, so it slows down and then lands gently. I mean, the light bridge used here is really great. Uh, it gave me absolutely smooth video, no dropouts. Some occasions where it told me weak video signal. DJI states that it has three and a half kilometers of range, which I believe them. Of course, I can only fly 500 meters to stay legal here, but I think, yeah, one and a half kilometers would have been no issue at all. And you can also reach this range because you have a long flying time, so that's really cool. And one of the best things you can do with this craft is just go up like 50 or 100 meters and then fly a straight shot for as long as you can. Let's do a quick discussion about the gimbal and the camera quality. So the gimbal stability has no issues, it's really great. The only issue this has, if you're in sport mode and turn around like crazy, you get, you get a weird movement on the gimbal, but yeah, sport mode is not for filming in my opinion. Uh, the difference between the Inspire and the Phantom 4 maybe is, with the Inspire you can get stable shots even at 70 km per hour, which is crazy fast for a camera platform, so you can film cars and, and motorcycles and stuff like this. With the Phantom 4 you can only get stable footage to around 30 to 40 kilometers per hour. This thing for me had more flying time than the Inspire. You get a very stable platform. If, if you just throw this in the air and let it hover there, it will look so stable. Uh, on the TV, if you see the video, you actually think it's a picture. Uh, unless you see some movement there, like tiny cars moving or something like this. So that's really, really stable. The weed shaking I'm doing and... And it can move up quite far and you can. And it's a new feature, you can look up with the camera. You can lock this in software, but you can look up 30 degree. And of course, you can look down 90 degree, which gives you the nicest of shots. Actually, it can go yeah, beyond 90 degree. But, yeah. So you can get really nice shots of the ground from above. I could show you um, more details of the of the app, but yeah, the app didn't change so much. You get the optical avoidance uh, readings, which work like a parking system, and you have things like the active track and tap fly. But I will show you this uh, live while flying. It, it's better this way. The camera is uh, really sharp. It has an advancement to the Phantom 3 Professional. It is. Uh, higher quality, sharper, has less chromatic aberrations, uh, it has a bit more color noise um, and what I found on some shots or on, on, on my shots that while this is uh, almost distortion free image which is really good, on the left side of the image I had unsharpness, on, on, the, yeah, on the edge it wasn't sharp but you will see this on my shots and can judge for yourself. I did check the lens is not dirty or something, um, so that may be an issue just with this model, but that's a minor, a minor bug on the lens, I'd say. Yeah, and something I want to test now is the latency of the light bridge. I mean, I had no issue whatsoever flying it, uh, so latency is not a problem and it will be 
around 200 or 300 milliseconds. Okay, I will display you the exact uh, latency now, but it, yeah, it felt like 100 or 200 milliseconds, which is not too bad. Maybe this uh, latency will increase if you're further out, but yeah, that's okay. And it looks like a minor improvement than the latency of the previous light bridge implementations. Uh, you hear a loud fan noise, so this processor uh, in the Phantom 4 needs a lot of cooling. You also hear a clicking sound, that's the sonar. So my conclusion to the Phantom 4, it's more a flying camera than anything else. It's not just a drone, it's not a multicopter or whatever. You can use this like a camera that you throw in the air and move around freely and get stable shots that really look awesome. This will appeal to videographers, photographers. You can really get cool shots with this. Of course, if you have to be ultra professional, you might want to consider the Inspire even with this Micro Four Thirds style new cam they have, which is crazy expensive. About flying FPV and my hobby, Flying with this thing doesn't actually uh, feel like flying or you don't get the sensation of flight, the immersive feeling, unless you have the HDMI to goggles and so forth. If you want to have the sensation of flight, probably the best thing to do is get a remote controlled glider with an FPV cam on it and this, this really feels like flying. If you want racing sensation, you get a mini quad which is super fast and unstabilized. You don't get this for uh, getting into the FPV hobby, I think. It's more, it's more the camera aspect of this that's important for most of the buyers. And I want to encourage you, if you're one of the newbies and have zero knowledge, don't just fly it anywhere, please. Don't, don't mess up our hobby in flying this in cities or endangering other people. Don't fly near airports. Um, this thing is so secure by itself that you can, as a pilot, uh, make some errors and it will uh, help and assist you, like with this obstacle avoidance system. But of course, it doesn't have uh, this uh, obstacle avoidance to the side or the back, so you can crash into things. You can do stupid things, but in the standard setup, it will prevent many stupid errors. If you can afford it, just get it. It's a really decent camera platform. If I forgot something, just leave me comments, uh, ask me questions in the comments, I'm happy to answer them. Also check out the description, I surely put tons of information down there. Hope you love this review, uh, leave me a thumbs up, thanks for watching, bye!